Hey, Michael. Obviously, it seemed like the effort was significantly better, um, but, but obviously not the result you wanted. What do you say to your guys after this? Yeah, I, I would agree, Mike. I, I thought our guys played really hard. You know, I, I think we left it all out there. Um, I really think this game came down to two things. One, uh, you know, the turnovers, right? We had 20 points. We allowed 20 points off our turnovers, and they only had six points off there. That's a 14-point differential. And obviously, to have 20 points allowed in a playoff game, um, you know, it's something that you can't do if you expect to win against a very good team. Uh, the second thing, I think that game was lost on our part the last two minutes of that third quarter. And I remember talking to our guys in the huddle. It was 23 to 19 that quarter. We were struggling. We struggled all night to make shots. Um, you know, but our defense was keeping us afloat. And I think that the overall score at that point was 82 to 74. So we're within range. We're in striking distance. They closed that quarter on an 8 to 2 run. And they start the fourth quarter on a 6 0 run. So that 14 to 2 run uh, was insurmountable. And uh, we can't afford to allow those runs to happen uh, offensively and defensively. Um, but yeah, the effort was there. But let's be honest. I mean, this is game three of the Western Conference semifinals. I'm tired of people saying, hey, our, guy, our guys played hard. They should play hard. I mean, like that's. That's not something to be proud about. I mean, that's that's our job to go out there and compete and play hard. That should be a given. So they did that tonight. And uh, it's just unfortunate. Our crowd was great. Can't thank them enough. Uh, obviously, Nicola's award before the game was a tremendous moment for Nicola, this team, this franchise, this city, and this fans. But uh, they were great tonight. And I just, I just feel bad that we were unable to pull out a win for them because they, they made this atmosphere uh, electric. And uh, we just came up short. Katie Wingy, Good Sports. Hey, Coach, can you describe the lift that Monte Morris and Will Barton gave you off the bench tonight? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, I challenged Monte today. You know, uh, I hit him up, I sent him a text, and, and I just said, you know, which Monte is going to show up tonight? You know, is it going to be Monte Morris from game five and six against Portland? Or is it going to be Monte Morris from game one and two against Phoenix? And I let him know how important he was to this team and that we needed him. And, uh, and I knew that he was going to embrace that message and come out and play at a high level. And he did that, Katie. Uh, obviously, Will Barton, I played him too many minutes, 28. Um, but once again, I thought both he and Monte came into the game. We got off to a slow start. We didn't defend anybody in that first quarter. But I thought Will and Monte gave us a lift, gave us a spark. And I said after the first quarter, we were lucky to be down just by 10. Uh, second quarter, I thought we played terrific, especially on defense. But it's, it's really hard to win a game when you, you struggle to mi make shots and miss the number of quality looks, uh, you know, that we got. And uh, that, that's been the story of this series. They're a good defensive team, taking nothing away from them. But we have missed a tremendous amount of open looks uh, that we're accustomed to making. Jacob Toby, Nine News Denver. Coach, uh, what was the mood from the guys in the locker room? What was, what were some of the things that that were going on? Uh, obviously, not too much detail, but just what was the mood from the guys? Oh, I think frustration. Uh, I, I think we all know that we're playing a good team in the Phoenix Suns. We all know that we're not completely healthy, but we also know we're playing better than we have played in these three games. And I think uh, we gave ourselves a chance, like I said earlier, Jacob. Two minutes ago in the third, but right there, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, this is going to be a great fourth quarter. And it's funny how quickly a game can change. We saw that in game one in Phoenix. Uh, we saw it early in that third quarter in game two. Uh, and tonight, the end of that third, start of the fourth, this, this that two, three, four minute stretch uh, was enough to decide this ball game. Uh, so I'd say the mood is, is definitely one of uh, frustration. My only thing to our guys is uh, we're down 3-0. Um, we can't try to win four games in a row uh, in game four. Our whole focus is on trying to win a game. Uh, and, and I know for myself, I can't speak for anyone else, the last thing I want to see is the Phoenix Suns pushing a broom across that court after game four. Uh, we have had a tremendous season, tremendous. Uh, I said going into this year, uh, you can't judge a season – by the end result, we got to the Western Conference Finals last year. 
well, certain things can happen, but we could have a better season this year and not get as far. Uh, but the one thing I don't want is for us to go out uh, just quietly into that good night. Uh, I hope we show some real fight and resolve and force this series to go back to Phoenix for a game five. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey, Michael, I think there are a couple situations in that third quarter, definitely in the second half, where, where they, they kind of extend that lead to double digits and then they get second chance threes. I think one was uh, Devin Booker in the corner. I think another one was Cam Johnson. Just how, how much, how, how frustrating is that to kind of, I think you get back to seven and then you give up a second chance three. Yeah, it's always, you know, uh, frustrating. You know, I mean, we, we dominated the glass tonight, 46 to 38. Uh, we had 18 offensive rebounds for 21 points. But when you're trying to make that comeback, to your point, uh, there's one possession that I remember vividly. Uh, it's a loose ball. It's a loose ball. And who, who wants it? Who's going to come up with it? And, you know, they come up with a loose ball. They get a three. They come up with an offensive rebound. They get a three. Uh, you make it really hard on yourself to uh, succeed in that comeback attempt uh, when you don't come up with those rebounds and or loose balls. So, um, you know, that, that was definitely unfortunate in those instances. Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Michael, I know you talked a little throughout this series about just the mental and the physical fatigue that, that Nicole is probably experiencing right now. And he goes out tonight and it seemed like he just really gave it everything he got. Uh, what do you think of his night and just how he tried to carry uh, you guys to the end? That was incredible. I mean, uh, uh, how many times do you see in the playoffs a 32, 20, and 10 triple-double? Uh, it was a special moment, I think, for all of us. Uh, but to see Nicola out there with his two brothers, Nemanja and Strahina, before the game, uh, it's too bad that Babe and Papi, his parents, weren't here for that. But, but that, that is a special moment for uh, the Jokic family. Uh, that was spectacular. And the fans did a great job of, you know, celebrating that moment. And then he follows up the MVP award presentation by putting on an MVP uh, performance. Uh, it's just unfortunate that that was wasted. We couldn't get some other guys to step up and make shots. And it wasn't for a lack of effort. We had a lot of guys trying their best out there uh, and just didn't go our way tonight. Um, and I know Nicola. I love Nicola. Uh, I know that come game four, uh, he's going to be with me and we're going to try to do everything we can to, uh, to prolong this series. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Brandon Cristal, KOA Denver. Coach, I guess I'm going to cheat a little and ask you about MPJ and Will Bart, how they feel physically, and then also what do you say to your team because being down 0-3 historically is certainly not on your side. Yeah, I mean, well, as far as Michael, you know, obviously um, it's been a tough series for him so far. I mean, that, that's just, you know, that's the facts. You know, that's what the numbers say. Um, you know, he's trying. He made a couple of threes late, um, you know, but he's just got to stay with it. He's a second-year player. Uh, he still has a tremendous amount of room for growth and improvement. And uh, these kind of trials by fire are only going to speed up that uh, process and his maturation. Uh, Will Barton, again, I'll, I'll have to go talk to him. Our trainers, uh, the training staff is probably going to be really upset with me for playing him 28 minutes. Um, but a conversation that Will and I had, he understood the risks that were uh, inherent with playing that many minutes, but he wanted to put himself out there and try to do whatever he could to help this team. Uh, as far as the 3-0 deficit, yes, uh, history is not on our side. Uh, but you know what? We've re we have rewritten history the last couple of years. Uh, and and the, when we were in down 3-1 twice last year, uh, it was never about trying to win three more games. It was about winning the next game, winning the first quarter, winning the second quarter. And that's got to be our mindset. My only hope is that uh, we haven't let go of the rope because what history tells us. My only hope is that uh, come Sunday afternoon, evening, whenever that game is, that our guys show up and fight. I, I think they deserve it. Their teammates deserve that and our fans deserve that. To go out there and leave it all on the line and then you can walk off the floor with your head held high. Thank you.